People, Deluded, I'm back again, your favourite YouTuber, the best YouTuber at this, Deluded, quick plug of the t-shirt, yeah, Fridays, Q&A days, people, obviously this is on a Thursday, so obviously uh, to bring it out on a Friday, it's got to be done with the day before, but what can I say, man, this episode in particular, you lot have come heavy with the questions, and I know I've forgotten some questions, because my, my comments on YouTube were popping, um, Twitter DMs and Twitter thingy messages were popping, so all I can do is say thank you for the questions, man, we've got a good day diverse set of questions and I don't waste time because we're going to be here for a minute like I said there's hella questions here man let's start off with Brandon Potter Johnson now shout out to Brandon man I see all his positive comments man and there was one comment he made about how he loves my realness on my vids and how um he sees similarities because obviously he must be another IC3 like myself in London so thank you very much for that for your kind words consistently but cracking on with your question um, you've put thoughts on Thierry Henry sacking firstly. Now, obviously, Thierry Henry, I know there's some weird Arsenal fans that that, that kiss the ground Giroud walks on, but want Henry to fail, regardless of his comments or whatever, yeah. I wanted him to do as good as he can. Now, looking back, he's learned a lot of lessons. I don't feel he helped himself, because when you see a lot of the things coming out, um, you're hearing that he had a lot of problems in terms of player management. There's issues in even regards to Falcao. He, Falcao went and told the vice president's daughter. Um, he, he kept threat, um, threatening to alienate players and drop them, demote them to the reserves. Um, obviously, he was there mocking play, Well, not mocking, but heavily critiquing his own players on... Um, heavily critiquing his own players while the game's going on and that's not necessarily a bad thing but people management is one of the most important things within football and there was a lot of mess in, in, in Monaco and there was a lot of things going poorly before it started, um, before he even started there, sorry. So um, I'd say for me, probably how he handles people management, it, um, how he handled um, people and his people relations, which is arguably arguably in today's market more important than how you can coach a team because regardless of what someone says about Jose Mourinho, I mean his CV and his years in football speak for itself. Today's game seems to have passed him by because he's not a good people person. You see with Shaw, Rashford, he, he messed with Rashford, but Rashford to a degree, Pogba and Martial, the best examples. You need to be able to do that. Um, that being said, I do think if he if his people management skills were a bit better and his philosophy was of a higher standard, they would have probably sucked, Monaco would have sucked up this poor form and just kept him until the end of the season. But I don't feel he'd done enough for them to believe in what he's trying to implement in terms of playing style and things like that. That being said, he did bring through some young players. Um, the young centre-half I'd like to have a look at. Um, Benoit Benashela, I can't even say his name, man. My French people helped me out. Um, it, like I said as well, to be fair to Omri, it was a poison chalice. Now, it took bravery to take that Monaco job, I won't lie to you, because it looked poisoned, essentially. There's several question marks over the playing staff, several question marks over investment. They they just looked in, 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 in a bad sort of way, and it could tarnish your reputation, which he's done, but I think he's going to come out of it stronger, regardless of if he succeeds as a manager or not, because he has immediately learned how to do things, and probably he's sitting there pondering what went wrong. So, probably that, to be fair with you, would be my opinions. Um... The next step for him is to just simply go again. This is management. You're going to lose jobs. You're going to do well in jobs. You just have to go again. That's all you can do is suck it up, really, my guy. Um, you've also said, it confuses me when a manager plays um, a centre mid, um, Xhaka, at centre back, when we have youngsters who are natural in that role, Medley slash Pegloroso in brackets. What do you believe is the hesitation to throw them into the deep end and see if they can swim? I ask because part of the game I don't understand. I see thing, I see most things in black and white. We need a centre-back for the game. We have young centre-halves who need the chance to prove themselves and gain experience. So you throw them in the mix now. What am I missing? To be honest, my guy, you're not wrong, man. You, 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 you're, you're not wrong. You're actually not wrong. You need youngsters need a chance. At the end of the day, they're not gonna, they can't get experience until they give experience. But at the same time, Unai Emery works with these players, and I don't have any excuses for Jacko playing centre half, my guy. I'm, all I can say is Unai Emery deems he deems him adaptable. And if I was a young player that, um, if I was a young player and I saw Jacko at centre half over me, um, and when I say young, I'm I'm kind of grouping everyone in. It doesn't matter if I'm 18, 19, like Medley, if I'm on loan, like Chambers and Bielik. I'd feel some sort of well. I'd think you must really not rate me because I'm not at the club and you're playing someone else in my position. I get it, but at the same time, and again, I can't defend Xhaka because arguably he's the worst midfielder in terms of defensive um, duties in our team. So to put him at centre half sounds like suicide. Um, probably with the ball playing, probably he's. Ex not experience at centre half, but his experience as a senior pro is probably why he gets the nod. Because these young players, yes, they're natural in that position. Yes, I'd, I'd probably back them to excel. Yes, I share your thoughts that they need a chance. But um, 
it could go either way. Um, again, Xhaka's not the best in terms of positioning and things like that, but you can't underestimate experience from having that many senior appearances as a professional. When you're a young player, there's a lot of things you don't know you don't know. And I've always said for young players, the majority of it is off the ball. And you need that harsh baptism, but I get it, to be honest. I, I, I get why Unai Emery does these things, but, I, but at the same time, I don't. I'm with you, my guy. And that's the only thing I could say. It's probably down to, it's down to them having a lack of experience and them not fully being trusted. And we must also talk about patience because as much as I rate Medley for example um, all of his better games are actually with a ball now that's what Arsenal are looking for in the centre half so he's very good at bringing the ball out from defence and when he's got little minutes at first team level he's done his job my guy but um, from what I see of him at youth level he still needs to improve defensively in terms of concentration he vacates his position a lot he can get a bit excited with, with the ball playing sort of stuff so he is very immature in several incidences maybe that's what Unai Emery needs to see him eradicate slightly out of his game or find balance before he gives him even more minutes I believe in him medley like I said but maybe that's why I don't really know my guy but that's my thoughts so hopefully I've answered your question my G I don't think you ain't you got anything else so I'm gonna crack on Bell's asked um is there a video on Dio Opomakano coming up? I think I've done one. I think I butchered the club he played for because I got confused in regards to... I knew he obviously played in Germany, but you obviously... There's how many teams called Leipzig or Red Bull or whatnot, so I got confused. But if you type in Deludi Guna and Opomakano, it will come up, my guy. So I did it a year ago. Um, all of us knew about him, man. He's a terrific player, man. He's going to cost a pretty penny, man. I'd love to get him. Um, Coutinho goals asked, Rabi is a talent, man. Isn't it time for us to call back Reese Nelson deluded? I would love for Nelson to come back, my guy, but also believe he should stay out the season. He's committed himself there, and I know he's had an injury of recent, and he's been in and out the side, and his consistency has been there in periods, and other it hasn't. It's a learning period, man. We loaned him out for the season. He should, for me, he should stay there anyways and just continue his education, come back next season a stronger player. But I do share what you feel. I do. Part of me wants him to come back to the club. I know we've signed Denis Suarez, and there's talk of Perisic and Carrasco, and all these things but I think Nelson could have got minutes this season but you know Emery's deemed it best for him to go out on loan he works with these players week in week out or he did until Nelson went Germany so yeah man that's what he's conceded in it so that's my my thing Luigi Juan asks can you please make a video of the disgusting racist remarks of Escher Gupta made um, made about Iwobi well I actually have a video about it but I didn't release it because I didn't want to give airtime to these twats man I mean it's stupid, man. A country as diverse and whatnot as India and things like that, she's just letting people down, man. Really and truly, she's a disgrace to her country because, like I said, India's a rich country and, and filled with cultures and things like that. She's, how can someone be raised in a nation like that and have so much ignorance in her heart? I don't know. Um, she said she'd made some half-assed apology with hella um, spelling errors and she said that um, it was her friend said it out of frustration. So, I mean, if, uh, if, if being frustrated, ironically, how you can be frustrated with a Wobi in that game, I'm not too sure personally because against United he was one of our better players but if frustration leads you to calling someone a gorilla you probably are racist and God knows what's said behind closed doors I mean she all to be honest she can yeah man she can go play with the traffic man she is really a, the acronym see you next Tuesday should be reserved for her she's just one crony Jan Krogel so really and truly she's just water of a duck's back and ironically she looks more she looks more disfigured than it will be ever could man she's clapped but um yeah, man, let's not give any more minutes or time to idiots like that, man, twat. But moving on, hopefully I've answered your question, Luigi, man. Big up yourself. React Beat General asks, we're, we're about to miss out on Telemans. Why have we not inquired about a loan move for um, Leon Bailey? I don't think that's feasible, my guy. If they do want, if if Bailey is to leave, you're going to have to pay top pay, sorry, top market. Him and Horvites are probably going to, you're looking at probably 50 million to even start negotiations. Or if you're, hopefully you can get it for that, but... Yeah, man, they're not taking no loan. Ironically, Leverkusen's form has been indifferent too, but it is what it is. Shan Desarks is, hopefully I've said your name correctly. Why can't Arsenal go for Zaha? He'd be way better than Perisic for about the same amount of money. Um, Because it wouldn't be the same amount of money. Zaha's, they've quoted, someone got quoted 70 million for Zaha, so make of that what you will. Um, I would love Zaha at the club, but that's inaccurate, my guy. Um... So, yeah, man, I would love Zaha, but I don't think it's feasible, especially if we haven't got any money in January um, for what the club tell us either way. And we're going for loans, and I'm saying a man costs 70 million. There's no way we're really going to be able to structure something, and Zaha is going to be allowed to leave Palace mid season, especially when you consider where they are in the league table. I wouldn't say they're, they're relegation contenders, but they're mathematically 
they're in and amongst that sort of fight, my guy. So it would be silly for Palace to go and let him go in January and play that risk because if you're looking at the teams they're around, Burnley, I think Newcastle's down there. Obviously, you've got Huddlesfield, Fulham and Cardiff probably missing out a couple of teams. Um, Zaha could make the difference. I don't think Palace will go down, like I said, but while they're still mathematically in within them sort of things, they can't rule it out. So to, to lose their star man would be silly. So, yeah, I don't think it's feasible. Um, Stefan said... Just wanted to ask a question, Deluded. Do you have any idea how Maximilio Allegri's style of play is? Um, I don't think he necessarily... I feel style of play, typically in today's market, people attribute style of play with being attack and, attackingly sound and stuff. In regards to his, his style of play, I'd say his 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 principles are being organised first and foremost, knowing your roles, knowing other people's roles and fighting for the team. And that's what I like about him, to be fair with you. Obviously, I think he... Um, breeds creativity but I wouldn't say he's the most creative manager I think he likes di I wouldn't say dynamic midfielders because I wouldn't necessarily class Pjanic as that but you have to be able to work to play in this team you've seen Dybala do a lot of tracking Matuidi um, historically I know I, I, has Asamoah left um, but Asamoah once upon a time um, little couple people Mandzukic even being on the flanks workhorse sort of thing you need to be able to work hard it's, a, it's very much a team thing we win together we lose together and I, I like Allegri man I would have loved him at Arsenal but I'm happy with you, Ney, and we are we're at where we're at in that regard. So, yeah, my guy, hopefully that's your question sorted. Um, Marble Hall, sorry, Marble, man, um, the question thing got cut off. Apologies for shaking the screen. But you said, do you like sides that most Gooners hate? I'm asking since I don't mind Man United. I like their history and players like Bobby Moore, Best and Giggs. I don't mind Chelsea either. I'll always hate Spurs, though. It's in, it's in the blood. Um, to be honest, I don't necessarily like or dislike. If it's not Arsenal, I don't really care, to be honest. Like you said, with United, um, I like to think, you lot can see, I'm not really biased. And if Arsenal didn't exist, or even if not, if Arsenal didn't exist, United would be one of the clubs you're looking at to support um, and whatnot. Away from Arsenal and Arsenal not existing, and that example, I mean, I hate the United fans. It's obviously a banner thing. I love you lot. But uh, my friends always banter me. Just looking at the club, I mean, United is... It, like I said, man, if they offered me a scouting role or coaching role previously in the vid, I'm gone, man. United's one of them clubs. If you're a player, coach, even a dinner lady, you don't think twice about going. Like, for me, if I was a footballer, I know United are not where they're at now, but for me, there's certain clubs. If it's not Arsenal, when they, if a club was to bid for me, I'd listen and I'd, I'd probably leave. And excluding Arsenal, United's one of them. You're looking at Madrid, probably PSG now, Munich, and, and them sort of Barca and them sort of teams there. Um, United is a rich club with a rich history. And I always say Sir Alex Ferguson's my granddad. So I got a lot of time for what Sir Alex Ferguson and the, the club has, have achieved. But I wouldn't, say, I, I wouldn't say I like or hate them. I mean, I just like Arsenal and it is what it is in terms of banter and stuff. I mean, hate's a strong word. I mean, obviously I hate Spurs though. That's a real word. But he, even then... I love what Pochettino is doing as a club um, in terms of a man in terms of the management stuff. I love how they, I would I'd say their youth record with young players is overstated, like a lot of people. But there's a clear path where you know players are going to get chances. And again, if Spurs offered me a scout and coaching role, even this video role, I'm going without a chance, boy. Like. I, I I like Spurs in terms of what they do in that regards, but of course I don't like them. Chelsea, we don't. You can invent your own examples. Anything Chelsea get bun, but anyways, cracking on. CM's asked it, asked me. Asked it isn't a word, but he's asked. Another consistent guy, man. You're always out here giving consistent comments and your opinions and advice. So big up yourself. But you've said keep up the good work, my guy. Thank you very much. Your work rate and knowledge is incredible. I know you focus on youth a lot. What do you think about the Arsenal coach who said if young players don't don't join, you said young players shouldn't join Arsenal? Apologies for butchering that. Um, you're obviously referring to Yonka, the former Arsenal head of development. He went to Wolfsburg. I don't know where he is now, but what he actually said was um, they shouldn't join Arsenal or the Premier League. He obviously he didn't say nothing new under the sun in regards to chances. He used Daniel Marlon as an example, and he's not wrong. I mean. He's not wrong in what he's saying. I don't I don't necessarily agree with not joining Premier League sides, obviously, but he's saying in terms of football, it's best to go into another nation like Germany, etc. And to be honest with you, it's true, but it's also hypocritical because when you as Wolfsburg boss, admittedly, I don't have it to hand, how many youngsters did you give chances? I know you brought you brought Kaelin Hines with you um, and things like that. How many how many got chances under you? And you was part of the head coaching thing at Arsenal, so you would know better than others, but he's not saying anything new, man, under the sun. Um, yeah, the less said on him, the better. And you've also said, if you're a young player, and wait, no, that was the previous question. You've also said, out of Mason, out of Mason Greenwood, and and Jaden Sandro, and I don't know what you've asked me, my guy. Um, I don't think you've structured this well enough. But 
I think, apologies, I'm not trying to buzz you on that because you're consistent in this thing, but I think you've asked me out of Mason Green with Jaden Sandro and Callum Hudson, the door who do I think has got the most potential. And I, I, how long is a piece of string? I think Mason Greenwood's obviously behind them because of age and he's still playing in the second string for United and them things there. But they've all got potential. I've got a lot of time for Hol um, Hudson Odoi, got a lot of time for Jaden Sandro, and I think Greenwood's a very special footballer. They're all special footballers, and for the nation, for us, it's good for us. In a couple of years, we could have a healthy debate in regards to which one of them should go World Cup, should all go, should who miss, who's better. It's good for the nation, but in regards to who's better, I don't know, my guy, man. Um, Nitro's asked, DG, I have a question. With the money... got a sign on my, on my thing. With the... Let me start again. I've lost it. I really should make the font bigger. But yeah, here we go. Um, with the money spent, isn't it obvious that the money was spent horrible? Yes, we've got two world-class strikers, but we're nowhere near contending. Do we blame Wenger and Glazidis for this? Well, obviously they have to share their blame. I know Wenger did a lot of a lot of Wenger. Uh, Wenger should share blame because obviously he was here. But a lot of what Wenger's actually blamed for wasn't his. And um, you look at stat DNA. It's proved he, he he does like data, but it's proven he didn't actually want Mustafi at this club. To be fair, it's actually proven he didn't want Mesut Ozil to sign a deal at the wages he was offered. So obviously Wenger has to hold a lot of fault because in the last few years I feel he's made decisions that um have been what's best for him or what he deems best for him, not necessarily the club. You look at Giroud and Koscielny being given new deals, for example, not investing in certain areas, not signing certain players. Glazidis is a liar. That's all we have to say about him. Yes, he made the changes at the end, but yes, you can't escape Kroenke because the culture comes from the top. There's not, You can't do to blame. This is what I hate when Arsenal fans do. You can't just blame Glazidis or blame Wenger or even just blame Kroenke. They all have a part to play. And people that I'm not using, many members of the boardroom, they all have a part to play. A club doesn't get to the state we have, considering the status that we allegedly have, by mistake or by the options of one one person. This is down to a laxed culture, whether it is commercially, whether it was bringing in signings, whether it was daring to be innovative and be better. For years, Arsenal was comfortable with commercial approaches, with penny pinching. And you take shortcuts, you take shortcuts sorry, it costs in the long run. And that's why we're at where we're at, essentially, and playing catch-up. In my opinion, um, somebody's asked me, Aaron asks this, do you think Mark Bowler could make it in the Prem? I would love for him to do it, man. He's doing his thing at, Black, at Blackpool, so hopefully. Talvin's asks, can you talk about Sandra Burge of Gent in the next Q&A? Well, I've actually made a video about him. I like him a lot, man. Just type in Deluded that his name and it will come up, my GG. Jixton Johns asks, if we manage to get Overmars from Ajax, does it open the way? For their rich um, wealth of talents, not necessarily, my guy. You'd think it would, obviously, if um, Overmars joined in a position and we was in negotiations for an Ajax player, it would make it easier because, obviously, there's similarities that you could probably twist his ear a bit. But not necessarily, my guy. If anything, I think, um, obviously, he's a sporting director or, or technical director. He's not def He's not directly a scout, but there's a wealth of intelligence he must have in regards to players that are not necessarily at the Ajaxes and PSVs in Holland that could be tapped into Um so, yeah, man, I'm not too sure about us giving um, opening the door, but it definitely would give us some some sort of advantage. And if anything, I would just like us to bring in Greven back, but they're probably asking 50, 60 million. I think it'll be worth it in a couple of years, but that's just me. True socks. Why does football not promote its defenders at the levels of, of its attackers? And do you think there's a way to do it? My guy, I've made a video about this. I'm so happy you've asked me. This is one of the best questions. Big up yourself. We know... Obviously, the game, I feel, I don't advocate kicking people, but you can't make a tackle nowadays. We know Messi and Ronaldo and all of these things. The game's always been centred towards attacking players. They score the goals, they bring in the fans, they get the headlines. Ronaldinho, he can do, everyone wants to see Ronaldinho do a million skills and things. No one necessarily wants to see Rio Ferdinand as good as he is bringing out the ball. No one wants to really see him make a, 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 a tackle and things. We know defenders are unsung heroes of sorts. Um, that's that, my, that example is widespread, people. Defenders are unsung heroes. Yes, strikers score goals, but I believe the back four or five, including the keeper, wins you titles. Um, but that that's where we're at. Where we're at. We're not celebrated as well. I believe. I believe that's true, my guy. All you got to do is look at the Ballon d'Or list. They're never there. I think there should be a separate award. And ironically, I think the art of defending is not respected because I think Ramos is a good defender. But um, if he was to play, maybe not ten years ago, because that's old nine. But you guys know what I mean. Would he stand out? I don't necessarily feel so. And I feel what people praise Ramos for is not defending. People talk about his goal records and his clutch moments heading in and things like that. He's a leader. That's great. And that's part of defending. But do you see the problem? And obviously, the way football is going, the first thing people are talking about with a defender is can he play with his feet? The modern day requires that and you should be able to do that. But that is wrong. You should be able to defend. Same, the same said for a keeper. People are asking him how good he is with his feet. It don't matter how good you are with your feet if you can't catch a ball. But... 
that's the way we're at, man. Um, yeah, man, that's that's why I believe where we're at. Ayyub Hussain's asks, do you rate Conte as a manager and coach? Um, he's won the Premier League, he's done his thing at Juventus, I mean, and he's, his CV speaks for itself, so how could I not, to be honest with you? Tariq's asked me, to big up Tariq, amazing, man, my guy. Some questions for your next Q&A. Considering the calibre of players which have graduated and continue to graduate from the Dynamo Zagreb Academy, is it one of the most slept-on academies in world football? I've said that region, the Baltic regions, forgive me if I'm wrong and that's not actually it, but you look at Croatia, several other couple nations, they're them countries there you've got to scout and bring in. I think the issue probably is with English clubs or whatnot is we, the work permit issues and trying to get around that, forgive me if I'm wrong and it don't apply to them, but probably that. But I definitely share your share what you're saying, man, about Dynamo Zagreb, man. You've said he's actually called the most consistent English international for the last twenty years, and he, I mean, you'll probably find it, um, you'll find it'll be harder to find someone who um who has a claim over him. So I agree, full um full heartedly, my guy. You've also asked me thoughts on Dynamo Zagreb midfielder Lovro Manger. I like what I've seen about him, but I'm not gonna lie. You probably know more about them about him than me. You know, I'm never gonna lie to you guys. Um, I like I've got an appreciation for his technical ability. I like how he's he's always thinking. He's always trying to scan the pitch and things like that, but. Um, in regards to having an informed, real opinion on him, past that, I don't really have one, my guy. So I'm not going to lie to you. Um, oh, we've got Tayyip's question twice here. Sorry, my guy, I've copied and pasted your thing twice. Like an idiot. Um, Usman Bellows asks, what's your thoughts on Peg Luoso, the under-23s captain, and would you give him a chance to play right back for us? I'd consider it. I personally think it's now or never for him. I know Lomberg wants to give him a new deal, but he's like, what, 22 now? He wants to stay, but you need to go and play first-team football if he's not going to feature realistically into Rune Emery's plans. But I like him, and I think he's going to have a decent career. And you've also said, what do you think of channel art? If you know, you know. If you're talking about YouTube channel art, I don't know. I, I, I don't really have an opinion on it, to be fair. I wish I had some, but I'm not good at them things there. Um, but if you're talking about something else, I don't know, boy. So you're going to have to spell that one out for me. Um, one London Zarks door. London, but spelt with a one instead of an L. That's a smart one. What do you think of Lenny Lala? Seems to be having a good season. He's been having a decent season. He'd make a decent backup, but you know them ones there. You wanna kind of just watch them a bit more before you really call for them, cause that's uh, that's one big issue of mine. I like co confirmations in it. I can see a player's ability. Pardon me for shaking the screen. Can see a player's ability, but I like to I like to have assurances. I like to in my head go, yeah, that's the man for me, sort of thing, my guy. So. Yeah, man, it depends. Um, P P fourteen's asked, um, three players you think we should buy from teams outside of the top six. Off the top of my head, if we could, the two Palace lads in Yamba Saka and Zaha, I wouldn't mind Davy Brooks. Um, who else? I wouldn't mind Vinagre of foot of Wolves, Neves of Wolves. Um, Adama Traore is a bit of a headless chicken and it's not really fulfilling his potential. But him, have I said Davy Brooks? For a cut price for the squad, I suppose, just to answer your question, I'd say Fraser. Um, for the bench, probably Callum Wilson. That would be a that would shock people. I just feel our bench is poor and I feel at least he's guaranteed goals and I think he'd accept being a sideman at a top six club of sorts. Not a sideman, but number two sort of. Um, obviously, Leicester, you've got Madison, you've got Chilwell. Um, you've got Maguire. I'd actually consider Evans as well, considering what we have as well. Um, who else is there? I'm not really anyone from Burnley, Southampton. Mm, not really anyone from Southampton per se. I'm trying to think of all the teams. Cardiff, definitely no one. Fulham, probably Siri, um, if anything. Uh, and Sessignon. Um, Huddlesfield, nobody. Um, I think that's it, my guy. I'm trying to think. That's a good question. It put me on the spot, but hopefully I've answered that question, man. Um... Yeah, I'm trying to think, is there any more else? Is there anyone else? I'm going to finish this vid and think, yeah, I forgot. Uh, maybe Lascelles of, of Newcastle as well, because we, we really are poor at centre-half. Uh, I can't think of any, my guy, man. You put me on the spot. That's a good question, man. And I think that wraps it up, people. People, what can I say, man? We've been here for about 25 minutes. These are elite questions, my guys. Thank you very much. Different and diverse questions. Please hit me up so we can have a similar sort of turnout next week. If not, fair enough. But for now, comment, subscribe and do the rest. Your host, DG, I'm out. Enjoy your Friday or Friday evening whenever you're seeing this. DG, I'm out. See you in Manchester City and Arsenal play each other.